Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box for whatever time it now is. I'm late. I'm sorry. I'm actually hideously late. And I don't even know what happened. So today's been kind of hectic, to say the least. And it's mostly been due to the fact that my audio interface is on the way out. You've probably noticed over the past couple of weeks that there's been a hiss in the background. you probably notice it here, too. I try and bury it as best I can, but there's only so far you can really go to remove it. And it turns out this is a manufacturing fault with the unit that I use, and the chances are that there's no cure for this thing, so I'm gonna have to replace it. This is a pain in the ass because I hate buying new audio tech because it takes ages to set it up and get it working the way that I want to. So I spent the last few hours, well, more than that, researching all sorts of different things. I was thinking, eh, I'm gonna get an audio interface with an onboard analog compressor. Is that something that's possible to do? And looking through all this other stuff. And then I decided, hey, you know what would be good? What about if I call Musician's Friend about this particular unit that they've got on sale and see if they have any experience using it with different microphones? You know, maybe they've got a display unit, and let's be honest, you know, the website said, hey, call our experts at this department. So I called the experts in the recording department and said, hey, you know the uh, the Focusrite Forte? That looks like a pretty good unit. This is about like a $650 piece of kit. So I wanted to make sure that it was actually all right. And I said, do you have any experience using it with the Electro Voice RE20, which is pretty much a broadcast standard microphone for a lot of the radio stations around the world. And that is one that I currently use here. And the guy kind of waited for a little while and said, um... I'm just looking at it here, and uh, there's a very positive review on the website. There's one review on the website, by the way, because it's, it's a fairly new piece of kit, so not exactly accurate. Certainly not what you trust a purchase for. I was like, and he says, well, what do you use it for? Like, well, I'd want to use it for voiceover recording with the Electro Voice RE20, a dynamic microphone. And I very specifically said, a dynamic microphone. It looks like, oh yeah, it should be absolutely perfect for that. You see, it's got phantom power. Uh, which I just paused and like, well, thank you for your time. That was very enlightening. Yeah. The funny thing is most people aren't even going to get the reference there, but let's just say if you have even the slightest knowledge of recording, then you will know for a fact that having phantom power is not a plus for a dynamic microphone. And there's the little story. Done. Let's do sales. So, folks, these sales will be running on for at least another day or so. Also, bear in mind, it looks like they're going to be doing a bunch of recap sales. They're doing an encore towards the end of the sale for an additional two days. So if you missed any of the really good deals, they're probably going to pop up once again. That's been happening quite a lot this sale. I suppose it's good for people, but it is significantly less interesting. All right, let us begin, shall we? I'm going to kick it off with the Trine franchise. 75% off, which takes it down to $8.74, €7.49, and £6.24. What does the franchise contain? Should be fairly predictable. That is Trine 1 and 2, as well as the Goblin Menace DLC. Does it save you any money? Only if you also want the Goblin Menace DLC for Trine 2. And it's going to save you about $1.48 and the regional equivalent. It's okay. It's not a great deal. But if you were to look at the individual prices, then it certainly is. So Trine and Trine 2 are really great games. They are essentially, I would almost say puzzle platformers. I would probably say that Trine 2 is a bit more puzzly than Trine 1 is. But oddly enough, Trine 2 also has a lot more combat than Trine 1 does. So... It's a case of you control one of three different characters, and you can do so all at the same time by switching between them on a whim. And each of them has a different ability. It reminds me almost of The Lost Vikings, although you don't have all three characters out at any given time, so it's only a thematic consistency as opposed to anything else. And it is an absolutely beautiful 2.5D world. In fact, it was one of the first really good 2.5D platformers, and it looks awesome. Very much a physics-based game. You can cheese your way past a lot of stuff, but that's part of the charm. There is emergent gameplay involved in there. Now, Trine 2 is a better game than Trine, simply because it does have online co-op, which is something that Trine 1 did not have, sadly. It does have local co-op, but not online. So with Trine 2, you can have up to three players playing the different characters and you have to figure out how to get everybody across, which is tricky. There are, once again, ways of cheesing it, but that really is up to you. Personally, I think these games are very, very high quality indeed. You can watch me play a little bit with the Yogs cast if you so desire. That may give you the shove that you require in order to pick it up. It's good. It's really, really good, in fact. It's well-crafted and it is one of the best-looking indie games you'll ever play. The fairy tale aspect of the game is absolutely charming, and I would be very surprised if even the most cynical hearted creature would not at least crack a smile at some of the more fantastic environments. 
Amnesia the Dark Descent, 75% off, taking it down to $5, €3.74 and £3.24. Once again, a really great deal for a really great game. This is a first-person horror game where you have absolutely no way whatsoever of fighting what is trying to kill you, so you have to avoid it as much as humanly possible. It is one of the most tense and terrifying games that I've ever had the pleasure to play, and the sequel is well on its way. It also happens to have a modding scene, and as such has a bunch more content, including, of course, Amnesia Justine, and a few other pretty good mods. So, if you're looking for something to scare the living crap out of you, then Amnesia The Dark Descent is certainly the way to do it. If you don't wish to play it, you can watch one of a million and one Amnesia Scarecam Let's Plays, or alternatively, you could not do that and drink some bleach, because it would probably be more enjoyable. Just saying. Crisis 2, 75% off. That takes it down to $10, €8.74 and £6.24. Made its way back onto Steam after being taken off and put back on again and yay being so, so silly with that. The Crisis Collection is also available. Not going to save you a huge amount of money there, unfortunately. A little bit, a couple of dollars. FYI, for those of you in the US, you can actually get the Crisis Maximum Edition cheaper than this if you're looking to pick up Crisis and Crisis Warhead. That does not include Crisis 2, but that will save you about $2.50. It may also be available in other countries, but gotta be completely honest here, I have not used Gamefly in any other country, so it is difficult to know. But that is a digital version of the game, so you can save yourself a little bit of money there. Crisis 2 Maximum Edition, this is the cheapest that I've personally seen it, and it is a reasonably good first-person shooter as far as I'm concerned. I liked it quite a bit when I played it. I feel that they struck a reasonable balance between the fairly open-world nature of Crisis and a more linear and directed shooter. I don't necessarily think that Crisis 2 is a better game than Crisis, although the lack of nonsense alien crap halfway through the game certainly helps it out a lot. It's got nonsense alien crap from the very start, and they actually did that pretty well. A reasonably impressive game. It does need the high resolution texture pack on PC in order to even look as good as it should, simply because texture quality is down across the board thanks to the wonderful disease of consoleitis. It was a multi platform release, and as a result, the PC version suffered significantly due to the fact that consoles aren't really that powerful. But there are various mods available for this game which do improve graphical fidelity, which is quite nice. So it does get up to the level of the original Crisis, which came out several years before it. Go figure. As I said, it's a pretty good, if fairly linear game. There are a couple of ways of approaching each objective. It's mostly a really large set of corridors, because of course you're fighting outside in a city, so it's a really big corridor with some freedom to approach. It's pretty nice for a linear shooter. It's not too bad at all. As regards to the multiplayer, that's not something I would really concern yourself with. Last time I tried it, it was full of hackers, and it wasn't exactly well balanced either, so not really worthwhile. But the single player is pretty good, and you're certainly not going to regret picking it up for that at any rate. As regards to the original game, well, that's a classic until about halfway through, which is worryingly similar to its predecessor, Far Cry, which is also a classic until about halfway through in the Trijan pop out and say lol. But yeah, I mean, Crisis is still a really awesome game. I love that game to death. It's always nice to install it after you've got new hardware, put in some of the really extreme quality mods and see if your machine can actually handle it. It's nice. It's good fun. Drive Jeeps into people. You can also punch Jeeps into people. Sleeping Dogs, 66% off, taking it down to $17, €17.19. That's not too shabby a price indeed for a rather enjoyable open-world GTA-style action game with an emphasis on beating the crap out of people with fancy kung fu moves and driving their heads into air conditioning units. That's really what Sleeping Dogs is all about. It also happens to have a great story, great voice acting, and... A surprising lack of guns, which is a good thing. There are guns in the game, but they are fairly limited, which is quite nice and a little bit of a difference from your average run-of-the-mill GTA-style sandbox game. It also has some pretty good DLC out for it. The Nightmare of North Point is a rather awesome Chinese-themed horror DLC, which has got all sorts of supernatural goings on. And there's been a recent DLC release called the Zodiac Tournament, which is all done in a cheesy 60s-70s-ish style of kung fu movie and that's pretty cool too. There's also a bunch of other stuff that you don't really need to worry about. It's all sorts of vehicles and weapons that you don't actually need. They're pretty cheap, so that's not too bad, but one way or the other. This is a great game, in my opinion. Absolutely wonderful. 
I had a blast with it last year, and it also happens to be a really good PC port, and the problems were quickly patched, and it's had good PC support, so as far as I'm concerned, they deserve to be rewarded for that. Really good game, and you'll probably enjoy it an awful lot. Just bear in mind that there is no multiplayer in Sleeping Dogs. Forge, 50% off, taking it down to $10, €9.49, and £7.49. So this is one of the games that popped up on Greenlight, and you also notice that I played it a little bit on my channel. The games like playing World of Warcraft Battlegrounds, only with some FPS-style aiming and a few more tricks up your sleeve. The ability to do stuff like wall jump, the line of sighting system is a lot better because you can line of sight a projectile that's currently in flight, you can dynamically block stuff, there's rocket jumping cause hey why the hell not, and the environments are significantly more interesting and also have a rather fantastic vertical element to them. There are five pretty well balanced classes in the game, there's no leveling up whatsoever so you get all of the skills from the very start, and it's essentially PvP action based on that. Now, would I recommend it right now? It's got some problems. It still has quite a few people playing. It does actually have an active community. It's not a big one, but it's definitely an active one. And it seems like the game's got a ton of potential, but it needs to be expanded a little bit more. And more importantly, it does need some of the bugs fixed. It is still a little bit rough around the edges and was perhaps launched too early, which seems to be a problem with games that pop up on Steam after their inclusion in the green light system. I mean, the discount's not bad, and it's still a fun game, and you saw me having a blast certainly on my channel. You can go and watch it and figure out if it's for you. But as I said, I always like to just give people a little bit of a warning that what they're going to be getting is not necessarily a complete product. And I'm sure that with a few updates, it's actually going to be a great game. Currently, it's merely a good one with some bugs that may very well impede your attempt to enjoy it. And finally, Rage, 75% off, taking it down to $5, 5 euros. Apparently, it's not available in some tier 2 European countries, so bear that one in mind. And £3.24. Why is it not available? You might ask, well, that's because it's games for Windows Live. Bollocks to that system, and hopefully it dies in 2013. This game had a load of problems on launch for a lot of people. I felt very lucky because I was not one of them. Anyone who happened to be using an ATI card, well, this game was utterly broken out of the box for them. It has now been fixed for the most part, and there are also a ton of fixes and tweaks available over on PCGamingWiki.com, which include tweaking the FOV, improving texture quality, and a bunch of other things. However, aside from the technical problems and the fact that Games for Windows Live is a colossal turd, I really liked Rage. I thought it was a bunch of fun. However, I feel there were some problems with expectations. I think that people saw it and thought, oh, it's another Fallout game. Well, no, I mean, it's, a, it's not a sandbox game by any stretch, but it is a fairly linear game with side quests and the ability to drive around a wasteland and race around and fight in desert dune buggies, Mad Max style. What I really liked about this game was the fact that the shooting was super satisfying. You had a lot of different weapons, you had a lot of different ammo types for those weapons, some of which were absolutely ridiculous. There was an economy and crafting system involved in order to get the best stuff, and the enemy AI was really good, and the animation quality on the enemies was just superb. That's the thing which sticks in my mind the most, the way the enemies actually reacted to getting shot. I mean, shoot them in the leg, they'd fall down, and then they'd sort of try to drag themselves away, limp away in a, a logical fashion and I really enjoyed that. Unfortunately, it's not the best looking game because it was really designed with consoles in mind. It's certainly not an ugly game, but it is by no means the best looking game, especially considering we expect better really from id you know id used to pave the way in the graphics department and they really don't do so anymore but for this price i think if you skipped rage on launch it's probably time for you to give it a try because what you'll find is a fairly linear but extremely enjoyable first person shooter set in a post-apocalyptic environment with plenty of character and an interesting weapon selection as well as really really good combat now it did just release some dlc by the name of the scorchers apparently that's a very good piece of dlc and goes somewhat to fix the fact that the ending for the game in the last level was apparently garbage. It was really not very good at all, so I think I'll dip into this game again and try the Scorchers, because what I played of Rage, I absolutely loved. It was a lot of fun, but it got plenty of deserved criticism because of its PC port on launch. They really screwed that up. Alright folks, that is me done for the day. Thank you very much for watching the Sailbox, and I will see you next time.